Hello everyone. Welcome to the video walkthrough of the EA release of DigitalOcean's VPC peering feature. A month ago, DigitalOcean launched VPC peering as a beta release for DO customers. Today, we are launching the EA release of VPC peering for all DigitalOcean customers. What is VPC peering? VPC peering, aka inter-VPC routing, is a networking feature that allows resources in different VPCs of DigitalOcean communicate with each other over the DO backbone. It enables a seamless bidirectional peering connection between VPCs, allowing resources within those VPCs to co communicate with each other as if they were on the same network. In this video, we're going to explore how to create VPC peering and test it across DigitalOcean workloads like droplets, load balancers, and Kubernetes clusters. Without further delay, let's dive into the demo. As soon as you go to the DigitalOcean console, the way you create VPC peering is go to the networking section, click VPC, and you should be seeing third column called connections. This shows how many peering connections each of these VPCs have. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to test the VPC peering between NYC region and London 1. So before creating a connection, I would like to test the connectivity between them. So let's log into the NYC droplet and try to connect to the London droplet or London ILB. I'm going to get the IP address of the load balancer that I created in London. That's 10.106.0.168. And I'm going to ping that IP. As you can see, since there is no peering established, I cannot reach it. So let's go back to the networking section, go to VPCs, and click this default NYC1 VPC and create a peering connection with London 1. That's it. That's the only step that you need to establish peering. Once this peering is complete, we should be able to see shows up as one peering connection up here. Now let's go back to this NYC droplet and try to ping the IP. Now you can see connectivity works. Now I'm going to also curl the IP because I have this service running in London 1 behind ILB load balancer. As you can see, I have an internal node balancer behind which I have two droplets. Now we are getting response from either of those droplets, alternatively from New York, a droplet. This shows inter VPC peering works between New York and London 1. So now we will test the same VPC peering on the DOKS clusters and our databases. So before diving into the demo, I want to mention that we are also releasing the ability to create VPC native clusters along with the ZA release. Now, just to give a quick background, traditionally uh, in DOKS clusters, the nodes are added to a VPC network, but the pods and services operate on a separate virtual network. As a result, the pods and services cannot actually talk or communicate directly with the resources in the VPC or peer VPCs, requiring a network address translation step that can introduce inconvenience. With this VPC native cluster creating ability, you can unlock transparent communication between the pod 
network and other VPC networks, including the Node VPC, without requiring a NAT. Now, it's important to note that this is supported only from Kubernetes version 1.31, and only new cluster creation supports VPC native clusters. You cannot enable existing clusters or transform existing clusters into a VPC native cluster. That's not supported. And we support this only on API and CLI in this release. As you can see, these uh, pod networks, 192, 168 uh, subnets, uh, these are pod and service subnets. These has to be non-overlapping subnets among the VPCs and among the pod and service networks that you have in other VPC native clusters. It should be non-overlapping from them. And uh, currently, this is manual. That is, the way to identify the subnets that is available is a little bit manual, but we will walk you through the steps. For the purpose of this demo, I want to point out that I have created a droplet in London 1, a database in NYC 1, and a Kubernetes cluster uh, with service uh, behind the Kubernetes cluster in NYC1 and I have exposed that service through ILB to the VPC network which is accessible from other data centers if VPC peering is enabled between those two data centers. Now let's dive into the demo. Let me introduce you to the command that you need to run in order to create a VPC native Kubernetes cluster. This is the CLI command that you can run to create a VPC native Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, there are key things here to note. One is region, and second one is that version of the Kubernetes, and node pool size are the two important things are the cluster subnet and service subnet. These two subnets should be non-overlapping. I know while you create this, while you try this command, you might not be aware of what or the cluster subnet and service subnet that's available. Um, so there is one other command that you can try. Here is the JQ command where it helps you to see what Kubernetes clusters are out there and what are the non-overlapping subnets that have been already created. So knowing this, you can go ahead and try creating um, any non-overlapping subnets for your VPC native cluster creation. Let's try it out. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna create one in Tor1. There you go. With this command, you should be able to see the VPC native Kubernetes cluster getting provisioned. Let's go back to the Kubernetes clusters page. As you can see, the VPC native Kubernetes cluster gets created. Now, let's move on with the demo. Since I have already created the other um, two VPC native clusters, I'm going to show you that. If you click one of these clusters, you can see there is an overview card that shows the node network, pod network, and the service network. Now, as I have already established peering between London 1 and New York, I'm going to test the connectivity from one of the droplet, that is from my London droplet to my Kubernetes service because the peering is already on. So let's jump into the London droplet console and let's go ILB address. As I mentioned, I have exposed the service, which is a simple web page that says welcome to pod network. 
um, have exposed that service through an ILB. This is the IP address of that ILB, which is routable. So let's go back to the uh, London droplet and try curl. There you go. So as you can see, I am able to reach the Kubernetes service, which is in New York from my London droplet. Now let's do another testing with our databases. I have already created a MongoDB database in New York, as you can see here. This is in the New York subnet, 10.116.0020. Now, I would like to access this MongoDB database from my London droplet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into uh, another droplet in London 1 where I have installed Mongo client and I'm going to try accessing this MongoDB database from my London One droplet. As you can see, the connection went through. This test signals that the traffic between London One and New York One in our testing of both the OKS and database clusters passes through the VPC peering that we created. Now, if you wanted to destroy the VPC peering, you can go to the VPC under networking section, go to peering, and as you can see, the New York to London VPC peering can be destroyed by just clicking this delete connection. Now, that's it for the demo. Thank you so much for listening through. Now, Go ahead and start creating VPC peering in DigitalOcean and uh, seamlessly scale and connect your resources beyond geographies. Thank you.